good grief it's hot in the shop right now. It's like 96, it's probably gonna keep climbing for another hour or two. I think it's a good time to have a talk with you guys about how to fix your automotive AC the cheap and easy way. So the goal of this one guys is not to uh, teach you to become air conditioning repair experts or to discuss like the I guess correct way to recharge a air conditioning system or to chastise you for not doing that. I mean I think everybody knows the right thing to do is to have them vacuum down you know especially if there's stuff in the system buy a professional have that recycled and there are a lot of reasons to do that and I do have the equipment to do that but I'm not going to cover that today. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is what I know most people do which is just go down to the store buy a can of stuff and dump it in when their AC quits working and I'm going to discuss uh, probably $20 worth of other repairs you can do at the same time that will likely eliminate your problems for good and actually uh, affect a repair instead of just a, uh, a band-aid. So it has been my experience as a hobbyist, you know, I don't do hundreds of cars, I do, you know, dozens, that there are three main places where you're going to have a refrigerant leak on an automotive AC system. And two of those places, and I've heard people use numbers like 90% uh, of the time this is your fix, are the pressure ports. On this, this is my 97 Blazer, this is Johansson. Um, it has two different styles of pressure port. I think you can just see the first style. What that is, and Sippy Cup has these two, that'd be my 95 Escort. So maybe I can show you better on there. But what these are is there's a little rubber check ball in there that closes that port, and those wear out. So what happens is over time or over you know, the many times you might open these to service it, that ball wears out. And what you need to do is just buy a new fitting. Um, these fittings just screw onto this rail down here. And I had to do this to my dad's truck last year. He's got a 95 Silverado. I bought a GM part number fitting here. And I think it was like $9. GM runs on the other port for some reason, just a regular style Schrader valve check port at the other port. So all you have to do there is get a new air conditioning grade uh, Schrader valve and just take your tire Schrader valve install and removal tool and just screw a new one in. So you can replace both those charge ports on this truck for less than 20 bucks. And that uh, is highly likely to solve your AC problem forever. The other most common place to see a failure is going to be on the compressor front seal, or at least that's been my experience. The there's a seal down here. It'd be like a front main seal on your engine. And when that seal fails, you'll see usually oil slung up around the hood and on these pipes and stuff. And that lets the refrigerant escape too. When that happens, uh, you have a couple choices. My go-to would be to just buy a new compressor, uh, especially with the stuff as old as my stuff. Those are pretty cheap. Uh, I actually priced one out for the Escort and it's like 120 bucks. Um, I have in the past had one of these professionally serviced. It needed a new uh, front bearing in here and I had them put a new seal in and all that at the same time, charge it. And the bill for that was like $200. So <sighs> DIY versus pro, you know, you're about the same money. If you don't have AC, proper AC recharge gear, I would probably encourage you to stay away from this repair and just have that professionally done. But if you are the type to just toss a can in, yeah. Before you do that, just replace those charge ports. Spend the 20 bucks and you'll almost certainly fix it. And I'll uh, show you guys a couple of my other vehicles just so you see those too. All right, so we're over to the Escort now. And maybe you can see it a little better. Yeah, you can see it a lot better. There's a little ball in there on that one. And again, it's the same deal as the Blazer. You can just unscrew this whole fitting from this line. And these, uh, these I actually think I had to end up ordering from like uh, Amazon China or something. So they were like 10 bucks for the pair. Uh, they actually sell specialized size sockets for these. The ones I bought don't really seem to fit. I suggest you just use an adjustable wrench unless they're really stuck on there. And on this guy, the other one, it's also one of those little check balls, but it's a different size. So you're actually are supposed to buy two of those sockets. And again, I think I just put these on with an adjustable wrench. But uh, last year I recharged this thing after I replaced those and smooth sailing. Uh, no AC problems this year. And that was with uh, the polar vortex over the winter when we got down to like negative 50 in my part of the country. So all that stuff would have, you know, shrank up and leaked if it was going to. And uh, no real problems. I think maybe this guy has a, uh, a slight compressor leak, but 
it's been a year and the AC is still ice cold, so mission accomplished. Now we're over here looking at my 97 Wrangler, uh, my TJ. This guy runs uh, what I would say is the more traditional thing I've seen in the past where both the ports have Schrader valves in them. So, you know, like two or three bucks, there's uh, one port and the other one's actually on the back of the compressor right there. Uh, two or three bucks, you can fix that up, no more problems. And obviously you want to look for other problems too, like I actually have these cracks in this hose. The AC in this thing still works fine, I've never serviced it and it's 20 years old. But if it failed, I would go ahead and replace stuff like that. These hoses can be surprisingly affordable, surprisingly not sometimes. So, so that's just something to keep in mind too is just do a quick visual check of this kind of stuff too before you just throw a can in it. Um, another thing I will want to mention quick is uh, if you are going to just go down to Walmart and buy refrigerant, never buy the stuff that has stop leak in it. Um, that stuff is harmful to the compressors or it's not healthy for them anyway. And then if you ever do want to hook it up to a vacuum machine, the vacuum machine has a risk of sucking that uh, sealant up in it and damaging the machine as well. And, you know, you don't want to be the guy that upsets the AC shop or, you know, if you buy your own stuff later on, you don't want to destroy your own tools. So it's just much better off to just prepare them. And I'm going to cover one more thing quick, and then I think we're going to wrap it up. If you have something really old, like my Fox body here, and you have a R12 system still on it, you're going to find that these, well, first of all, everything I've seen that's this old is always like the uh, Schrader valve style. So just your tire removal tool style fittings. But what you're going to find is that you'll have to take these fittings out and you'll screw new fittings on them that are conversion fittings to go to 134A. So when you pull these guys out and put the conversion fittings on, you're solving the problem anyway. Um, we might talk more about converting to 134A in a future video. I've done it a few times. I've had you know, pretty good success with it. It's actually on the agenda for this car. But uh, if that's something you want to attempt, it, the same methodology applies. You just remove those guys screw the conversion fittings on, and you're ready to charge. Well, after you back it down, but again, different topic. Another thing I want to mention quickly is if you do opt to replace these ports, this is the high side on this one, the, the low side where you actually charge is harder to get to. So this is just an illustration. Make sure the can tap you have, so the part that you put on top of the can to actually attach to this to charge it, actually fits the new fitting. <laughs> I ran into a problem with that uh, last year with this thing and had to buy another can tap. Who knows why the one I had didn't fit. It's all 134A stuff, you know, probably just uh, Chinese manufacturing standards. Something to keep in mind when you're at the parts store or whatever, getting your stuff. Make sure everything fits together or you're not going to be able to charge it or you'll be able to half charge it and it'll leak and you won't like that. With all that said, I'd really love to have you guys as a subscriber if you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Bye.